without any So though we have informed him and taken that legal opinion. Right. So at some point we you actually want to go outside that boundary. Because yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, RBI in India has uh, classified wallet as three kinds. Yeah. So closed wallet, semi-closed, and open wallet. Yeah. So something you're like a, a, you're a closed wallet. We are a closed wallet. Okay. Though we have put an application for semi-closed also, and uh, we have uh, given all the documentation to RBI, but there is a waiting list of some hundred applications. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Any other questions? Yeah. <coughs> You said that when you're going to mobile, you've got there's two business models. You either have to charge them on the mobile or you have to give them something for free. D can you split that market up? Because th that's exactly the same in the UK. You know, you can charge people on the mobile phone for the jukebox, for example, but you can go to other plates, pl parts of the UK where they say, no, we just want to give it away for free. D d does the market split in any particular way? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, since we are in the business where we are doing both the things, we are also partnering with YouTube and giving content for free. We have put in about 500 movies onto YouTube and given it for free. So the way we segment is that there is a multi-screen Indian today which is very geeky, and he doesn't want to pay for content. Okay, And there is the other side of, uh, you know, so let's say, uh, if you go to tier two t cities, tier three cities, even in Mumbai, you know there is a segment of people who are already paying for content, but they're paying for pirated content. You know, so they have a need for content. They really don't. Uh, they really don't have the urge to kind of search for it or go to a free download site or you know those kind of things. So I think these there are two distinct segments, and. Uh, People would move from one segment to the other, but fundamentally, I think for next five to ten years, both the seg segments would remain. Though in India, I think 70% of people would still want to get content for free. What sort of conversion ratios do you see in India? Um, if you if you provide stuff free, then how many people are signing up for premium content typically? Is there? Do you have any feel for the? Yeah. So I mean, sometimes you we do uh, you know campaigns which are based on that. Okay, you take a one week free and then you know you try, you, then you buy, you know those kind of things. <laughs> yeah, so usually it is ten percent, you know, seven to ten percent conversion. I'm smiling because in uh, Europe it's about one and a half percent. I mean, in India, uh, you know, why the conversion rates are so high is uh, uh, because the regulations around uh, uh, taking uh, acknowledgement from the customer when you want to renew it or when you want to start it, you know, those regulations are not as strict. So if a customer has signed up for a seven-day free, then on the sixth day, you know, you don't have to legally send him a message that, okay, you're going to be charged tomorrow. So it is, it is out of the ignorance and the uh, regulatory environment that the conversion rate, but if, if you do send a message, you know, then probably it would fall down. But even LinkedIn, for example, you know, doesn't send message. You know, they give one month of free premium subscription, 31st day, they just start, your, they just bill your credit card. Okay, so, oh, there's one question in the back there. Right. You mentioned about, uh, you know, distributing 500 movies uh, through your online channels. Just want to, just curious, how serious are the content producers in India when it comes to internet rights vis-a-vis -vis satellite and distribution rights? So the kind of content that we have tried on YouTube and, you know, ad monetization model is a pretty end-of-life type of content, you know, something which has kind of hit the box office five years back or four years back. 
So uh, I don't think you can monetize uh, fresh content just being released movie and you give it for free. It's just not going to work. You know, so uh, uh, the content owners themselves don't want to experiment with anything of that sort. So if I'm a movie producer and uh, uh, my, on Friday my movie is releasing in the theatres, so my prime monetization is on the theatres and then the second monetization is on the satellite. Okay, then some derivative monetization is through digital channels. So, you know, it's hardly 2% to his overall yield. There is a value attached, so it's, I'm saying it's about 2% of his overall yield comes from digital channels today on video. Music is a different story. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah. So, next on, I think, is Eva Boiler House Media. Okay, so the question is Paymed back here. Ah, oh, you're back, yeah. So, do you want to go next after this one? Yeah. yeah. So, we'll use the time effect. Uh, can, can, I, can I just ask a question about the last, the last presentation? The first product that you were talking about, does that, so it's a, an ad-serving platform, <coughs> but do you also have to raise the, you know, to go and sell the ads, or you have an agency to do it as well? So, you've got an ad-serving platform, but do you do the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have the connections into the agencies, and you've got the platform. <coughs> you ready? No. <laughs> no. Sorry. So I, have I don't know. I, I'm going to get some free advice here now. So one of the questions here is about the way advertising uh, is sold across media. Um, do the media planning and buying agencies have a very strong role to play in India? Uh, are there a small number of them who dominate the market, or is it much, much more? I mean, uh, there are the usual global prospects. So there are the Blue Times of the World and Zenith Optimedia. And, you know, so there are probably about six, seven large ones, uh, which control probably 50% of the market. And rest of the 50% is either directly managed by the clients or through boutique agencies or smaller agencies. But the global guys control 50% of the market, which includes WPP, Omnicom, and one or two other groups. And uh, you referred to, I think you said 2% was a figure you quoted for just now. For 2% is the content monetization through digital. Uh, through, but through digital. Yeah, but advertising split uh, yeah. that uh, gets spent on the digital media is touching about 4 to 5%. Right. And has the advent of 600 digital TV channels fragmented the TV advertising market? I mean, TV advertising is a big, messy business in India. Yeah. So recently there was some lawsuit also. So uh, there is a rating agency, TAM. You know, so basically people, uh, all the media planners buy uh, media, especially on t TV, as per the TAM rating. So you usually buy uh, uh, per certified points. And it's, it's completely driven by the TAM ratings. So, and TAM is, uh, you know, kind of monopolizing the whole market. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there have been some recent issues around it, right? Okay, I won't go into the issues or comment on um, television audience measurements and what they do. But I just wanted to give an alternative to that. There are obviously other solutions that are coming up. And one of the things, for example, the company w that I'm with, What's On India, is doing is that with B2C kind of apps and applications, different types of portals, and understanding what audience is actually searching for online and through various platforms, we're able to come out with trending data. And uh, we're, in fact, talking with a lot of these operators and, I'm sure, and broadcasters. And they're actually following this now in terms of kind of top channel points and gross channel points for packs and channels and many kind of ways of measurement and not just being able to rely on one source, which is very important. So I think we wish you all the best. So we need more alternatives. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? I'm nearly done. Nearly done. <laughs> okay. So while I'm still using the time for... So one of the other interesting things is 
is there reliable data from the digital TV channels on audience figures? Or is it all... Um, okay, and the TRP ratings are reasonably accurate, are they? I mean, on, a, on an audience of, uh, let's say, 150 million household, we have 10,000 is the sample size. You know, so five to 10,000 is the sample size. Yeah, but I mean, my gut feeling is 150 is, is probably the right number. Uh, so uh, the, the reason I'm asking is if you look in the UK in terms of TV and digital television, now one BBC, if they're doing Pop Idol, they might get 15 million subscribers on a Saturday, viewers on a Saturday night. Uh, might drop to three or four million. But some of the specialist channels like BBC4 and Frank will correct me if I'm wrong, but I was shown the... You know, there were nights when BBC Four had 25,000 viewers. Mm, you know, so there's a big range, and the rate cards are distorted, completely distorted when it comes to stuff like that. You ready? Oh, great! You filled in quite. <laughs> over to you. Do you want to introduce yourself?